what do you think the government because i think that's really uh, about a, a policy uh, decision from the government to uh, uh, allow a different body an independent body to investigate this complaint why do you think the government is not taking that uh, uh, decision what do you think is the issue there um i think that there's a lot of deference to police that goes on there's a, a sort of a perception that only police can investigate themselves mm. um, and that is a perception that is not the case. There are many, many examples around the world of bodies that independently investigate police. police yes. So it's quite possible for civilians to do a very excellent job at investigating police. And I think in London, uh, I've, I've read something about that, that that's what's happening in, uh, in, in, in the UK. Yeah. Police, police being investigated by an independent body. That's right. There's several models in the UK. The best model, though, is the one in Northern Ireland, and that's the Police Ombudsman of Northern Ireland. They investigate um, all complaints made by the public, so not just deaths in custody, but complaints of um, misconduct, assaults, um, a whole range of issues are investigated by this independent body. Mm. And that's really the model that we need here. Do you think there's any chance of, of that sort of thing happening uh, here in Victoria? Um, I think there is there is a chance of it happening. There are uh, the pushes to to get independent investigations come from a whole range of sources. Yeah. So uh, people who have have um, loved ones die in custody. Uh, the the families of those people are very strong advocates for independent investigation and. Um, we saw in Victoria a strong push by the Tyler Cassidy's family. Hmm. Um, Tyler Cassidy was a young man shot by the police. At, who, he's a 15-year-old um, shot by the police in Northcote. Northcote, yeah, I think I've seen that. Yeah. 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 His family were very um, strong advocates for an, the independent investigation of his death. Hmm. Um, there's also all complainants. It's... It's almost a, it's such a shock to people when they realise that um, the people that they have to complain to are the very organisation that they're complaining about. Yeah. And no one, it's only when you get, when you had that experience and you suddenly realise what's going on that you realise something has to change. So, yeah. um, you know, people over the years have, have run campaigns for independent investigation. I guess um, what's happening now is a sort of more of an international, uh, sorry, a national push. Mm. There's an organisation called the National Police Accountability Network, which is pushing for independent investigations of police in each state and body. So, um, right. so yeah, there's calls for, for this to happen. That's good. And then I guess there's also work that needs to be done on the community level, because even, and I know within African communities, even that, that decision to complain against police is one that, doesn't get taken uh, lightly. Many people would uh, would think uh, twice before they do that. Even even if they may actually have grounds for uh, mm -hmm. for it, they may have been victim of some sort of uh, abuse or, or uh, just uh, unfair treatment. Yeah. Uh, but they don't they don't necessarily go go ahead and make a complaint because uh, I guess in many African cultures, uh, complaining it's never seen uh, in a positive light. It's mm. not a good thing. And then also with the experience of. Uh, some of the uh, the people have been uh, through dictators, uh, uh, dictatorship uh, in Africa, complaining about police is actually creating trouble for, uh, for, for yourself. Mm. Uh, you know, do you think that there's probably also ground to educate um, uh, community members on the need to come forward if they think that they've been unfairly treated uh, by the police? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, people should definitely come forward if they've been mistreated by the police. There are a range of options that people have mm -hmm. if they've experienced some kind of mis misconduct. One of those options is to make a complaint to the police. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the inadequacies of the current system in that it will be investigated by police by and large. Mm -hmm. However, that complaint will go on that police officer's record and will be a trigger for future for, for police command to, to um, you know, identify that this is an officer with a problem. Yeah. So even if the matter comes back unsubstantiated, there is that, that effect. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that it is possible mm. to um, take civil action against the police. So that is where you yourself are a complainant, you bring an action in the court um, you to sue the police for what they've done to you mm. and that is an independent adjudication that will be adjudicated by a, by a court um, an independent person and you will have your own lawyer 
being able to bring that case. So that's one option people have, as, as well as making complaints. The other option is to investigate racial discrimination claims. And again, um, th those claims can go before an independent court, so the federal court, or if you make a complaint through the Victorian system, you can go to VCAT, to the tribunal. Mm. So there are options that people have. There's also very important options such as coming forward to media organisations yeah. and talking about what's happened. Yes. Media are an incredibly powerful form of accountability um, and people should really um, consider that as a, another, you know, a real you know, another real option that they've got available to That's, them. For accountability reasons, it is important to, mm. to take some sort of action. That's right. Either make a complaint, uh, I mean, a complaint, uh, you know, through um, the police themselves, come to the media or see people like like your center mm. that uh, uh, you can help uh, for that sort of issues isn't yeah, it? yeah that's right that's right and it's always good to be aware that you can speak to um, lawyers about what's happened to you and yeah. discuss with them what might be a good option for you so there are numerous community legal centers around Victoria there's 52 and um, you can go and speak to community legal centers you can speak to lawyers at legal aid and there are also private lawyers who you can speak to about these kinds of matters so it's really important to get some advice really early mm. um, there's all sorts of evidence that could go missing if you don't get get onto it early mm. often events will happen if it's in public there might be cctv um, footage that's available yeah. um, there could be uh, witnesses that we people might be able to get hold of quickly if, mm -hmm. you, if you come forward quickly so there's a whole lot of reasons to go and see a lawyer as soon as you can what sort of time frame we, we're talking there with cctv footage um it there's a range some some places will keep that footage for seven days um i think on trains you've got maybe um two weeks mm -hmm. If, you're, if it's an incident in a taxi, you might have 24 hours mm. in order to get that footage. Um, if it's, uh, we've just found out recently that the Melbourne City Council will actually keep footage for 28 days. So oh, if okay. it's an incident that happens inside the city itself, you've got, and it's That's, under a, a camera there, you've got 28 days. Mm. But they're all things to keep in mind. Um, also, many police stations do have cameras um, in various parts, so there are ways of getting that footage there. Okay. So that, that's important. The other thing to be aware of is that a lot of African Australians are taking civil action and discrimination claims. Okay. So um, this community has, has accessed um, legal options. And, um, you know, I think that's really important for people to be aware. It is. It is. Absolutely. So that that's needs to be encouraged. But also, I guess, uh, I get a sense that the police itself as a force is starting to realise uh, that there may be issues with the way uh, at least African members of the African Australian community perceive that they are being uh policed and are starting to sort of take some action to, to address that. Is, is that your view as well? Yeah, it's interesting watching their reactions to these kinds of complaints. Um, so I think what we're seeing now is um, a much more sophisticated response from the African community. Mm. Um, there's much; it's much faster, and um, programs like yours mm. are, are starting to to exist. Mm -hmm. um, that means that people can speak out quickly, and also forums are being um, recorded so that there's more access to what's going on. Yeah. Um, the the police have in the past. I mean, there's there's been a whole range of different responses. They, um, in, in 2006, in response to the Flemington complaints, mm -hmm. um, they set up a Kokoda trail um, process where they invited young people to come with them to the Kokoda trail. Um, and now these are responses that I, I guess are, um, they're not really dealing with the problem, which is the policing that's mm. going on that um, they'll set up forums or groups where they can talk to young people and try and explain to young people the law. Mm. The issue, though, is it's not young people having a problem with understanding the law. It's the way the police are policing those young people. Mm. And um, all of the responses that we've seen so far have, not, have, have involved the police trying to get the community to change rather than recognising that they themselves 
have some very concrete things that they need to do. Mm. Um, and so, and the concrete things that they need to do is actually to start understanding what racial profiling means, mm -hmm. um, what it actually, why it's racial discrimination to stop someone because of their skin colour. They, at this stage, don't seem to understand that. Um, this is a, an understanding that police in the UK have, in the US, and in Canada. So these other um, um, uh, English speaking countries, police are actually understanding racial profiling and that it's wrong. Mm. Here in Australia, the police haven't yet made that leap. So why isn't the police having difficulty understanding that? Um, it's, I, I'm not quite sure. I think it's partly because there hasn't been um, strong community resistance to racial profiling mm. until now. I think that there's been a lot of issues raised by the Aboriginal communities in Australia. And in mm. fact, we've had a Royal Commission into um, Aboriginal deaths in custody mm -hmm. as a result of um, racial biases in policing. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was a really powerful, um, in, powerful inquiry, mm. but it didn't look so much. It was more looking at um, why um, ab Aboriginal people were, in, were overrepresented in the prison system. Um, it, it didn't come to s concrete uh, recommendations about, you know, policing on the streets. To, it, it made some recommendations, but but not not the to the level that, that we're seeing in, in other places. Yes. Whereas in other other parts of the world, there have been major inquiries into um, racial biases in the police. Mm. Um, your listeners may be aware of the big inquiry that um, into um, systemic racism in institutional racism in the Metropolitan Police in the UK. It was mm. called the Stephen Lawrence Inquiry, mm. and it came up with a very large number of recommendations to um, stop um, racial discrimination by police. And one of those recommendations was the introduction of a stop and search receipting program that happened in the UK. It was mm. introduced in 2004. Okay. So, I mean, what's happened overseas is you've had big inquiries, judicial inquiries, making findings of racism mm -hmm. by police agencies. Yeah. And that has seen a transformation. Whereas here in Australia, we haven't had that. These are really imp important issues and I would uh, want to, uh, you know, really spend more time again with you uh, to, to talk about this. Um, but I guess this is just the, the beginning. We'll probably uh, look for uh, additional opportunities uh, in future and very soon to continue to, to talk about this. Uh, Tamar, we want to really thank you for your time to Africa Media Australia. And um, yeah, we hope to see you again soon to continue to talk about some of this wonderful work that you do. Absolute pleasure. Thanks very much, Clyde. Thank you.